All right, so we are in part three of this four part series of my story to healing my skin. And I am going to share today my framework. And just remember, the products were only a piece of it. And if you don't do these other steps, it's not going to work. So to start, if you'll remember back to my previous videos, I had mentioned that I had tried other products and nothing was working for me. And I realized something that I had seen so many times within our healthcare system. As a pharmacy technician, I have seen so many medications and they're not actually solving the root of the problem in most cases. And they're kind of covering up the bigger issue. And so once you use skincare that does that, that gives you that temporary satisfaction, the temporary relief, whether that's a scrub or something really astringent that tightens your pores and makes your skin feel smooth for a second and gets rid of the oil. Well, that is hurting your skin long term. And so those are just covering up the symptoms, but it's not fixing anything. Okay, so let's get into it. Step one is to be cautious. There are so many ingredients out there that are doing more harm than good for your skin. So let's identify those. The first one is sensitizing ingredients. Sensitizing ingredients don't just have to be synthetic. They can be natural too. And there are a lot of natural sensitizing ingredients. Those can be essential oils. A lot of them are not good for your skin, should never be used on your skin. Next thing is papaya enzyme. It's very destructive to your skin if you use it routinely. Another one is witch hazel. Witch hazel is very astringent and it uses tannins that tighten your skin and it's going to dry out your skin over time. Any synthetic fragrance is going to irritate your skin. There are a number of toxic ingredients within fragrance, but not only that, the scent itself is going to sensitize your skin over time and cause irritation. And then there's some more obvious ones that you may know. Those include denatured alcohol and sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate, or a lot of people call it SLS, is going to really strip away your oils and it's found in a lot of cleansers and soaps. It should never be used on your face. It's going to strip away your skin barrier and cause inflammation. The next one is the denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is often found in acne solution treatments. I know that people enjoy the satisfaction of degreasing your skin, but denatured alcohol is horrific for the skin and it's gonna cause so many problems for you. It is immediately killing skin cells, killing your microbiome. Don't use it, it doesn't belong on your skin. Another thing that I see so often is the use of strong actives. It's okay to use you know, niacinamide and vitamin C. Those can definitely supplement a good skincare regimen. But if we are using a high concentration of vitamin C on our face, we're going to cause damage. There are skin limits that should not be exceeded but R, I see it again and again. Like everybody thinks that more is going to be better. But just remember, I know you hear this all the time, but less really is more sometimes. So a lot of those strong actives, those include um, salicylic acid, tretinoin, benzoyl peroxide. Those shouldn't be used during pregnancy anyway. So I don't even consider them. Um, we are mothers and we are mothering children. And so we don't even want to risk it by having those in our routine. And so that is another reason why we are finding natural solutions. Okay, and then we're gonna get into those harmful ingredients, which you've probably heard, but I'm going to remind you now, they are phthalates, synthetic fragrance, and parabens. I won't go into the details of all of them, but just keep in mind that these are endocrine and hormone disruptors. They're also carcinogens. So 
whether they are only causing a small dose of damage, I don't take any risks and I don't consider them in my skincare. Okay, the last thing for step one is to use organic pesticide free ingredients. So pesticides are going to cause birth defects in the first trimester. You may think, well, I'm not walking through a field of pesticides. Well, something that you're applying to your skin multiple times and daily, I mean, that is going to make a difference. So make sure your ingredients are organic. Okay, now let's get into step two. Step two is to be gentle. And what I mean by that is to not use anything abrasive on your skin. Don't use scrubs, don't use washcloths, don't use those spinning brushes, don't touch your skin, don't pick at it, just leave it alone. Your skin knows what to do. Your skin can become strong if you'll let it. The goal is to keep your skin barrier intact and keep it healthy and strong. Don't do anything that's gonna compromise that. So routine exfoliation is going to break down your skin barrier over time. So make sure you're not exfoliating too often. I think maximum a couple times a week. Um, I exfoliate only when necessary. And so sometimes that means a spot treatment. Sometimes that just means using all over my face once or twice a month. So listen to your skin. Don't get excited and see those results and then continue because it's gonna spiral fast. The last one that I see too often is people using hot water to wash their skin. Hot water is going to immediately just take off all of your natural oils and it's going to dry out your skin very quickly. So use lukewarm water and instead of a washcloth, what I do is I flush my face. So make sure you're using a cleanser that is going to rinse away easily. And um, it might take a few extra seconds, but just rinse with water and then pat dry, but don't ever scrub. Okay, so now we're in step three. Step three, you're going to be intentional with your skincare. We are going to use products that are going to strengthen the health of our skin over the long term. So these things include things like antioxidants, fatty acids, humectants. All of those ingredients are amazing for your skin and they're so overlooked. They can do wonders. They're going to keep your skin hydrated and they're going to keep your skin protected. And as I've gone over in my last video, we really believe in using these maternal actives, these instincts that are found in plants like flowers and fruits and seeds. They have the ability to nourish, to protect and to regenerate. And so really looking for those types of ingredients. The next thing is to look for pH balanced skincare. Your skin's pH is about a five and a half. If you are using something like a bar of soap or even cast soap, I see that one is really popular right now. Those are going to immediately bring your skin's pH up. Soap and cast soap have a pH of almost 12. So that's an extreme difference from our skin's natural pH. And when you mess with that, you are also going to destroy your skin barrier. So see how all of these come back to this main thing, which is protecting your skin barrier. And the last thing for step three is to use unrefined, cold processed oils and butters. We're looking for that raw goodness that's coming straight from the plant. If you are using heat process, you are going to take away a lot of the benefits that you could have had in that oil and butter. And so a lot of companies won't invest in this because it's expensive and because it doesn't allow your products to have a super long shelf life, which most people want if they're going to put them all over the country in millions of stores. And because I handcraft all of my products, I'm able to make sure that we're using the best raw organic ingredients. Okay, step four is simple, but it's probably the most important and it's to be kind. 
not just be kind to your skin, but be kind to yourself. Don't get obsessed over the imperfections because skin is imperfect. And it has taken me years to be able to feel so confident in my skin that I don't have to wear makeup and I don't think about it anymore. But your skin takes time to heal and you should love your skin. Your skin is an organ and it's performing an amazing function in protecting your body. So focus on health over perfection. Notice how your skin feels. Notice how it doesn't feel so tight. Notice how it feels soft. Notice how it looks glowing and juicy. But don't focus on the little scars and pimples because it's gonna make you crazy. Next week, I wanna introduce you to a few of my customers who have tried the skincare, who have tried the regimen, and have seen some amazing results. I can't wait to share that with you, so stay tuned.